All right, now let's take a look on the national level about a Senate race in Mississippi being called Tea Party versus Establishment Showdown. And the Mississippi Republican Senate primary is headed towards a costly runoff on June 24th. Six-term incumbent Senator Tad Cochran, hardly a guy who will ever be confused with being some liberal here. And Tea Party challenger Chris McDaniel, they'll face off again after both candidates fell short of that magic 50% threshold needed to avoid another contest. Republicans have done a better job than they did in previous election cycles uh, from shooting themselves in the foot here, but at a time when they can take back the Senate, right? Cochran just gets through this. He wins the thing. This guy, it, it's like they just don't learn the lessons. And they, they tried doing this in Kentucky and a bunch of other places. The Tea Party went away, but if they lose by one seat, they're going to be, you know, doing like that VA commercial, hitting themselves in the forehead. Why can't they just make these things go away? Look, I agree that, you know, it's having a bigger tent, and if they support you in seven or eight out of the ten issues, like, we should all be on the same team. But that said, I think it just speaks to the mood right now of people and the extreme frustration and lack of leadership and what's going on in Washington. The reason this is happening is because Wait, people are frustrated. what does the frustrated. president have to do with a Republican primary? Because it's the whole system. It's not just the president, but people are frustrated with the direction of Washington. And they're frustrated by, by what's been going on. And you look at someone like Ted Cochran, who's been there for a long time, and they feel like you know, th they want something different. People are looking for a new direction and they're looking for change. And I think that has the fever primary broken, is though? indicative of that. I think it has, uh, you know, for the most part, but there still is that unrest out there and you're seeing that play out in some of these mm. areas. Andrew, political bets, sometimes they're good, more often they're lame. And I think we've reached a new level here with the uh, New York and California uh, bet as it relates to the Stanley Cup. Yeah, I mean, Governor Cuomo and Governor Jerry Brown had a bet back and forth. I think Governor Brown is betting rice cakes. and <laughs> governor Organic, lightly salted. Uh, uh, well, he's the governor of California. What are you going to do? Cuomo put up this stupid hockey puck showing, like, uh. three on-time budgets in a row, his budget hat trick, and a gift basket of, like, really fancy stuff. It's a really one-sided deal. <laughs> like, it's almost like Cuomo's laying odds on the thing by, by making the gift that much better. Meanwhile, de Blasio and... Uh, Garcetti, who are the two mayors of the cities, they have a bet also, but it's much better. It involves singing songs. It's either I, uh, de Blasio either sings I Love L.A. on Jimmy Fallon show or Garcetti sings New York, New York on Jimmy Fallon show. That's a bet. That's, that's a good bet. You remember any good ones they had? Because whenever they try and, like, I'm sorry, but when you're, like, giving a puck, oh, I pass three budgets on time, some staffer, right, who don't, wouldn't could tell the difference between a hockey puck <laughs> and a football, right? It's like, oh, let's promote the governor here. You know, it's so supposed to be lame. fun, right. you know, you right. dork, right? Uh, you ever see a good one? Uh, I can't think of any in recent memory. There have been so many bets between chief executives, so so the answer is no. Um, Cheesesteaks in Philly. I mean, yeah, like, okay, junior, that, yeah, those, those were the good ones. Those a the pastrami good ones. sandwich from Katz. I'm going to venture to say, though, you know, the last time the Rangers won the Stanley Cup was 1994, I, I when another Cuomo lost his election. <laughs> so he might be, you know, a little superstitious, wait, wait, secretly hoping that they yeah. don't win. How do you go from a bet on, just saying, on the, the Stanley truth. Cup to the, to the governor's contest? This it's is a, a billable hour for us to go right yeah. now. Hey, hey well. just a sad goodbye here before I let you go. Uh, Roy Goodman, I mean, you covered him, you yes. knew him. Uh, unique institution, passed away, longtime Republican mm -hmm. um, uh, from the, uh, covered, uh, represented the east side, right? Yes, Manhattan, <laughs> yes. Good man, um, no offense, Jessica, but the Republican Party could learn a lot from State Senator uh, Roy Goodman. He was a good person that he would reach across the aisle and he would Kind of in the world of uh, Jacob Javits, both right? Both parties yes. could yeah. learn a lot from him. I okay, think. that's fair. That's fair. Very good man. He Unique, right? Uh, Patricia. Very well-spoken. Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, Mario Cuomo said he had a velvet tongue and just really eloquent and real statesman. Yep. We will miss him. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, when we come back, I'm going to tell you about a special program we have tomorrow, which will mark the 70th anniversary of a day that changed the world. D-Day. We'll be right back.